Sermon of His Holiness Pope Jacobus I on 24th Dominica after Pentecost, 5th after Epiphany, November 12, 2023 Anno Domini. Commemoration of the Feast of St. Martin I, Pope, Martyr. Today is the twenty um, fourth Dominica after Pentecost, which we celebrate because of the uh, uh, the rule. Uh, we celebrate the fifth Dominica after Epiphany, as according to a common computation, as, as we uh, as the church uses it. And uh, the episode is taken <coughs> from the Epistle of uh, St. Paul, the Apostle to Colossians, chapter 3. Brethren, put ye on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, the bowels of mercy, benignity, humility, modesty, patience, supporting one another and pardoning one another. If any have a quarrel against any man, as also our Lord hath pardoned us, so also you. We, but above all these things have charity, which is the band of perfection, and let the peace of Christ exalt in your hearts, wherein also you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you abundantly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing your own selves with psalms, hymns, and spiritual canticles, in grace, singing in your hearts to God. And whatsoever you do in word or in work, all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Please stand for today's gospel. Which is taken from uh, Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 13. At that time, Jesus proposed to them, saying, another parable, saying, The kingdom of heaven is resembled to a man that sowed good seed in his field. But when men were asleep, his enemy came and oversowed charcoal among the wheat and went his way. And when the blade was shut up and had brought forth fruit, then appeared also the charcoal. And the servants of the good man of the house coming said to him, Sir, didst thou not sow good seed in thy field? Whence that had it cockle? And he said to them, The enemy man had done this. And the servants said to him, Will thou we go and gather it up? And he said, No, lest perhaps gathering up the cockle you may root up the wheat also together with it. Suffer both to grow until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather up first the cockle, and bind it into bundle, bundles to burn, but the wheat gather ye into my barn. Those are the words of today's gospel. Be seated. Gather up first the cockle and bind it, bind it into bundles to burn, but the wheat gather ye into my barn. In nomine Patris et Spiritus et Sancti. Amen. In today's Gospel, there are two portions that we would like to uh, teach in the sense of what our Lord wishes us to understand and the Church wishes to do, declares that her doctrine. It is evident that what our man is not only the ultimate uh, end of every man which is the particular judgment of and obviously the the 
the end of it, the results of that judgment is a reward in heaven or punishment in hell of the particular soul that stands in front of God. But also in regards to how to get to this point where uh, our Lord speaks about that, of course, the, he souls the, the word. That means that the, the good dispositions of the soul are inclined to receive it first. The second is that the soul receives the truth of salvation, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition, and obeys the church in it, in the doctrine that God teaches through the church, of St. Paul posted and another place that Christ our Lord preaches through him. That means that the, the guidance of God is in the church for that purpose, to teach the truth of salvation and correct those things that need to be corrected. And, of course, to make sure that people practice the Catholic faith in its entirety, punctually and in perseverance and holy obedience to the church, because otherwise there will be punishment, because there is no such thing as being disobedient and think that one remains Catholic in matters of faith and morals, obviously. Because by the very fact that a person is disobedient to the doctrine of the church in matters of faith and morals, one becomes a heretic. But then, uh, of course, there is the portion when our Lord speaks about the enemy who comes and oversaw the cockle among the wheat and went his way. Those are the temptations of the devil. The temptations when the devil tries to destroy the soul and ruin it, suggesting or sending someone whom he controls, even family member, to ruin the situation, to ruin the progress that the soul has made, and to destroy that chance of salvation. And those are the temptations, and once they are accepted at face value and, and consented to by that particular soul, that soul is ruined. And more the sin comes, and if, if it's regards the, regarding matters of faith and morals, that soul becomes a heretic at admin and that means automatic excommunication. And then there's no possibility of recovery unless that soul is reconciled and recovers from that, reconciled with the church by the judgment of the church. That means the servant pontiff to whom it belongs in this present time that's our person. And then there has to be examination of that soul whether that physical heresy is rejected and abjured. Obviously, there's some more involved in this, but that's what it entails, that the vices, and also the vices, the inclinations of the soul, the concupiscence, to all kinds of things that are detrimental to that progress of the soul towards sanctification and sanctity, ultimately. But that is negating the results and the dispositions that God grants initially to that soul to progress to that far, and then God expects that soul to persevere in it. There also come what is called the states of aridity or dryness of the soul, the difficulties, the, the doubts, the temptations of the devil, that the on the record, several from writings of the saints, then they were, they thought they were abandoned by God, and yet they continued their rule, they practiced, and they continued practicing the Catholic faith, and attending sacraments and so forth, going to Mass, and continue being Catholic in patience. And God sends these difficulties to try the soul, to test the resolve, result, and also to teach us patience in these tribulations that we have to endure because they come from his bounty and from his will. Not only to repay for our sins to God, but also to, to purify the soul in these difficulties, to teach us to learn from them and to progress in our sanctification so that we know how to deal with these things, to gain the proper experience how to deal with it, as God teaches us to do and gives us divine grace 
to go through with it. So then, when the servants of the good man of the house, as it says, uh, come and report that, he says that the enemy has done this. Uh, what should we do? And then there's a literal explanation to this and also the figurative explanation which we can apply towards the state of the soul, how to deal with such situations. Of course, those who will be inclined to cut the harvest as it is, the bind and the burn it, would negate that the works already established. Of course, God foreseeing that the human race is we shouldn't say incompetent, but at least incapable of producing good things without the help of God, obviously. The human race would come to rash conclusions and rash situations and results instead of being patient in those difficulties and enduring them and recover them, recover from them by prayer and supplication to God and asking for help, which God will grant. To claim that nothing is possible and nothing's working is very easy to claim. But then the soul is expected to put up the resistance to the devil and put up the resistance to these inclinations to abhor the vices that the soul has and to get rid of them. That means that work of the soul, the spiritual warfare, has to be taken and gone through. Otherwise, God will not help. When God sees that the soul falls in ap into apathy or an indifference, God forbid, or into despair, as the devil wishes that soul to, to fall into, and the soul does not believe that God will help, or stops believing, or leaves that necessary level of belief that is required for that soul to continue, then sort of lethargy ensues and, and, and leaves the soul half incapable of recovery. Of course, God sees that uh, situation as it is and instructs the soul by difficulties or by admonishment of various kinds, including books and sermons like these, not to quit. Quitting is very easy. But quitting is for losers. Quitting is for those who quit because they don't wish to endure those difficulties. They do not wish to carry the crosses that Christ our Lord sends them to carry. And then they negate all that they have learned and all that they must learn in order to save their soul. It is, there's no way out of it except to endure the crosses and carry them patiently daily. As our Lord says in another place, those who do not carry their crosses daily, they cannot be my disciples. And so God expects us to carry the crosses and even if those, if with those difficulties that we have and with those shortcomings that we have, even then, we are required to continue. We cannot just simply say we will not and quit. That is not acceptable with God. Of course, the devil sends all kinds of ruinous uh, stratagems and ruinous devices to destroy that resolve including family members, including suggestions of people whom he sends or possesses, including those who are heretics. And when such people don't pay attention and listen to their suggestions, they virtually listening to the devil and ruin their soul. And there's no help afterwards. Because who don't take care of what they believe and follow guidance of heretics, who came up with heretical suggestions and inventions and opinions, and present them as if there was something that the church always thought, and it is not. And they are on the way to hell. 
there's no other way. So on that, the question of all who want to save their soul, when they hear such opinions, or when they put themselves into that occasion of sin, occasion of danger and perversion, when they allow themselves to fall into this, they should ask themselves whether the church, the Roman Catholic Church, the true Catholic Church, not this novel sort of sect and the heretics and who recognize this sect or the civic council heretics, but the true Catholic Church, whether the church has always taught these kind of things that they are suggested to by whomsoever the devil sends. And the answer must be no. And when the answer is no, then they have to reject it. Not to espouse it, but reject it. If they stop believing it, they become heretics. And they sever themselves automatically from the church by virtue of the canon law and by their denial of the revealed faith as it is. And then they are on the way to hell and the devil takes over their soul, which is his objective, and then they cannot escape without the help of God. They cannot free themselves from the devil without the help of God. So then we come to the next point of doctrine in regards to today's gospel, and that is that when the patience of God, the mercy of God is manifest, is then when God has the patience to help the soul after so many failures and so many disastrous, uh, disastrous occurrences, and God does not wish that soul to be to be lost. When that when that soul uh, starts with obstinate refusal and maintains that refusal to believe the truth, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition, then that soul is severed from that opportunity, and God leaves that soul to her own misery. It is, it is truly disastrous to say, I will not believe, or I will not recover because I am told to recover, but it's too hard, too difficult, and I will not recover. Or to say, I have not signed up for this. This is too difficult, too strict. The Catholic faith is too strict. It's more convenient to believe these things that these other people are saying because they are easier. Yes, but then they are on the way to hell. And there's no recovery possible. And they can absolve themselves. And they cannot be reconciled with God in any way whatsoever because they are his enemies by professing and pu publishing, disseminating and believing their heretical opinions. So what good is it that they regard the soul as friendly as they can, that's the deception of the devil, and they invite such souls into their assembly. They offer them coffee and donuts afterwards, as it is common in some places, and all kinds of things for amusement afterwards. Yet they have an idolatry in their desecrated places, some of them, obviously, like the societies in past ten, so-called that illegitimate order that was never approved by the church by non by non-Catholic sect called Novus Ordo in 1970, Anno Domini. All these things and other such things that happen that we have taught and explained by our publications by this Holy See. People don't listen. People have to pay to God. People don't obey what we command them to practice and to learn. They will pay to God. People don't want to learn the catechism that which is we uh, dispose and direct them to learn the catechism of the Council of Trent, especially the translation of Father Donovan, which is in the into English language, or if there's any other they can obtain as long as they are sure assured that this is some older very old translation, not very, very old, but old in the sense of the security of that was truly published by the church, but not some kind of reprint or some kind of publication of the enemies, forgery. Then yes, they have to learn. If they don't understand it, they have to continue reading it and 
know the rudiments of faith and then they have to ask to be admitted otherwise they will end up through the heresies and be tested what they know and learn in advance so that they are ready when they finally obtain the grace of God to make that step towards saving their soul but if they go, go to the heretics they will not be able to do that because God will not help them because that offense remains in front of him and they will not be able to save their soul there are many of them who thought that they are on the good ground and that they are going the right way yet the cockle in their soul was sown by the devil the vices remained the false opinions heretical opinions remain and when the time of the harvest that means their particular judgment in this case when they died and went to face it in front of God they thinking that they were absolved they realized that they were not because they went to heretics and heretics cannot absolve and they don't have valid ordinations and episcopal consecrations and so they went to enemies of the church and they deceived them servants of Satan and they are now burning in hell because they didn't take care what they practice what they believe and what they profess but the Catholic faith comes first and if they teach these enemies teach and they do teach heresies and recognize non-Catholic sect as Catholic sect of communist agents and evildoers and heretics and apostates with fraudulent so-called sacraments they are not sacraments desecrated churches and all kinds of scandals and criminality involved and people who cannot assemble and elect the Pope because that's invalid because heretics do not have that authority do not have a membership in the church and jurisdiction do not have that and people still recognize them as Catholic and call them the church and so forth then they are offending God mortally and they will burn in hell that's a, that's a heresy but they have the choice and God has the consequences on the other hand, those who wish to be truly Catholic, they will be helped by God to see it if they so choose to persevere in it. And then they will be helped to come and to be absolved of their sins, to be admitted and help to protect their soul. And that's what we pray for, that's what we wish for. And that is the end. The patience of God allows them to remain in the sin, hoping even in the sin, mortal sin of heresy, hoping that they will one day realize that they are in it and to resolve, to recover and to seek the truth for the love of the truth because God is the truth, essentially. And I'm in a part of Jesus' praise for Sancti. Amen. Benedictio Dei Omnipotenti, Pater, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus, Descendo super vos, et maneat semper. Ah.